When Sony first released their E-mount mirrorless cameras, the range was a lot simpler to understand. Now fast forward to 2020 and they have more than 10 cameras available to buy and I can imagine for a consumer it'd be super confusing. So what I'm going to do today is give a quick one minute rundown on each camera to kind of show you where each camera sits in the range and which Sony camera is best for you. Let's get it. So in this bag is the full Sony mirrorless E-mount range that is relevant to 2020. And thank you so much to Sony Australia for supplying us with all the gear and the swag. Now, in a moment, I'm gonna open this bag and I'm gonna go through each camera. I'm gonna run through the best features of it and who it's meant for. Let's crack into it. So we're gonna start off with Sony's entry level price point in the mirrorless camera range. Now, six years later, I still can't believe we're still making a video and talking about this camera, and that is the Sony A6000. Sony A6000 is one of the most popular and still relevant cameras today. Now, this camera sports a 24.3 megapixel sensor, and it also has full HD video recording capabilities. Now, although compared to the rest of the market, it may seem a little bit lacking in the features. However, this camera is still a very popular camera amongst streamers who like to utilize the A6000 as a webcam. It sports pretty good autofocus and it has pretty good low light capabilities as well compared to the average webcam. And a lot of Twitch streamers live by this camera. So we highly recommend the A6000 for people who are beginners in photography or who are looking to up their streaming performance. Next, we have the upgrade from the Sony A6000, and that is the Sony A6100, which only came out recently. Now, the Sony A6100 sports 4K video and still a 24 megapixel sensor. Where it jumps up from the A6100 is that it has a much more sophisticated autofocus system, sporting a 425 hybrid AF system, and it can shoot at 11 frames per second. So for most photographers and videographers looking to really dive into that part of their creativity, the A6100 is a great entry level camera with very high level performance features. So now we're gonna move into Sony's enthusiast line of mirrorless cameras. And this is the cream of the crop for their APS-C size cameras. We've got the Sony A6400, which is a pretty good entry point into the enthusiast range boasting everything from 4K video, some really good autofocus and noise performance, and a 24 megapixel sensor, which you're gonna get some pretty good high resolution shots out of, but also sporting slow-mo video as well. Now where it differs with the A6600 is it's basically a beef up 6400. You've got in-body sensor shift stabilization, meaning you're gonna get cinematic video and a lot better photography performance as well, and it sports a larger Z series battery, giving you longer battery life and basically allowing you to go a full day without needing to carry multiple batteries. Oh, and one cool thing too, for the vloggers out there, the 6400 and the 6600 have uh, selfie screens. It's pretty neat. Or I just like to take photos of myself. And if you're a person like that as well, you'll appreciate these. Perfect, next camera. So fun fact, um, we did have a Sony A7C, but Josh forgot it to put it in this bag and the camera's back at the store. So uh, it's gonna have a different background. We are gonna film the A7C, but that's coming out right now. So now we're moving into the full frame range of the Sony E-mount mirrorless series. And we're going to start with a camera that just got released this year, the Sony A7C. Now, looking at this camera, it looks pretty similar to the 6000 series liner, and that's because it does share the same ergonomics. So if you are jumping from an A6000 series and you really like the ergonomics, or you're just looking for a small camera with a full frame sensor, the Sony A7C fits that bill. Perfect for any enthusiast photographer or professional, but more towards people who enjoy street photography, like to travel, and do like to vlog as well because the a7c does have a flip screen and it does sport 4k video capabilities 
To back that up, it does have a 24.2 megapixel full frame sensor, which is great for any low light photography or landscape photography and basically anything that you want to go out and shoot, you're gonna get high resolution imagery out of this camera. It also sports the typical in-body image stabilization and a sophisticated 693 point autofocus system. So if you're out there doing your run and gunning, this is a great camera for that. Now, a lot of people who use the 6000 series don't really care too much about the position of the viewfinder. However, a lot of professionals prefer their viewfinder to be in the middle. Now, one of the biggest advantages about having a range fire style positioned viewfinder is that you can shoot with one eye opened. And what that will allow you to do is for a lot of street photographers, they do like framing up their shot before the subject walks in. And that's one big benefit that the A7C has that none of the other full frame cameras have in the Sony lineup. And we're back. So now what we've got is the Sony A7 lineup. Now the Sony A7, although it also spots a full frame sensor like the A7C, you will notice that the actual ergonomics of the camera is completely different. Now the Sony A7 camera is one to remember for the ages. It had such a strong impact on the camera world and still to this day is one of the most popular mirrorless cameras out there. Now we're gonna start from where it all began and still a camera that's still relevant today. Now the Sony a7 was good, but the Sony a7 II was what rocks the world. It was one of the first cameras to sport an in-body image stabilization, which was game changing for videographers and photographers all over the world. The fact that you didn't need a tripod to get great stability was a, such a big winning point for Sony. One of the greatest things as well, it sported a 24 megapixel full frame sensor, which had amazing ISO and noise performance, and it boasted some pretty good full HD video performance as well. This was one of the best cameras at the time that not got you great photography and video performance, but also boasted really good autofocus performance as well. One of the biggest drawbacks of the a7 II though, was the battery life. Because it had so much power, it used to destroy the battery pretty much an hour or two into your day. Now this is where the a7 III came out. The a7 III is basically targeted at any kind of enthusiast, but also professionals. The features in this are incredible. Not only that it has a bigger battery, it's got a Z series battery, giving you a lot longer battery life throughout the day, but it also has 4K video and it boasts slow motion capabilities as well in the camera. And it was one of the first cameras to also play back slow motion on the back of your camera on your LCD. And I thought at the time that that was pretty game changing. The Sony a7 III also boasts a 24 megapixel full frame sensor. It has one of the best noise performances out there. So if you're a really good low light shooter and you like going out at night, this is probably one of the best cameras for you to get. And on top of that, the a7 III also had a plethora of upgrades too. Mainly with its ergonomics, it feels a lot better in the hand with its deeper grip. And they moved a couple buttons, such as the record button. The a7 II had a really awkward spot to press the record button, but they heard the feedback, they put the record button in the middle and it feels a lot better. And a really important thing, two SD card slots. The a7 II did not have this, and for professionals, that was a very detrimental feature to have and they incorporated it into the a7 III. Now this camera is still at a good price point and we highly recommend it to all you enthusiasts out there or professionals looking to start out with a camera with a low budget. Now we're going to be jumping into the high end spectrum of the Sony camera range. Now one of the most exciting things when Sony dropped the R series was that high resolution photography was now not only accessible, but never looked better than it did. So we've got the a7R 3 which was a game changer. It had a 42.4 megapixel sensor and it boasted also 4K video for anyone who really needed to film video, but it was more targeted at the people who love to shoot their landscapes, who love to shoot their astro, and basically needed a machine that was not only portable, reliable, but also boasted really good performance. Now the ISO range on this, although isn't as good noise-wise compared to something like the a7 III or the S2 at the time, the R3 boasted one of the best 
noise performances for a high resolution camera and it also had basically all the features that Sony was known for such as eye autofocus so you can get those super sharp portraits and it's got some pretty good processing capabilities on the inside to give you a lot of punch in your raw files for you to get some good edits out there. And next one up in the lineup is the Sony a7R 4 Now if you thought 42.4 megapixels was enough and a little bit barbaric, 61 megapixels is what's inside this camera. It's a lot of resolution and a lot of hard drives that you're gonna have to go through with the uh, rolls of this camera. Other improvements they made to the a7R 4 they made some incremental changes to the video as well, autofocus system, a little bit more sophisticated, and for the professionals, better ergonomics. You've got a deeper grip, you've got a more responsive shutter button, and a improvement to the back wheel. Now, the R range is not suited for the run and gunners, it's for the people who appreciate photography and like to slow down time. If you're in a studio and you're shooting portraiture, or if you're outside about to shoot a waterfall and you have time to kind of set up your camera with the tripod and shoot away, the A7R series is definitely for you. It's for the professionals who want to print their photos really large or the enthusiasts that just want a lot of resolution, want a photo hung up on their wall at home and just look at it every day and be like, wow, this is awesome. And that's what the R series is all about. So now we're up to my favorite part of our Sony lineup video. Now, I would not have imagined in 2020, and thank goodness I get to say this, but they finally upgraded the A7S II to the A7S III. After many years of competition from Panasonic, Nikon, Canon, and Nikon, progressively releasing amazing cameras for video, Sony had not only a tough act to follow from the A7S II, but had to withhold up to the competition that was out there. The A7S III, thankfully, lives up to its expectations and succeeds. Firstly, it still boasts a 12 megapixel full frame sensor, which is amazing for low light. Now, if you don't remember how good the S2 was for low light, this is even better. I'm pretty sure I saw a video once of an A7S II filming a full video in the forest with just moonlight, which I think is ridiculous. Anyway, great high ISO performance coming out of this, and to back it up, it's got very good video capabilities. You can record 4K up to 120 frames a second. Now imagine recording slow motion in 4K resolution in a camera this size. Absolutely insane. And to back up the already amazing Sony in-body image stabilization, there is software you can download from Sony, which basically boosts the stabilization even more when you're editing your videos. Now think of it like this, it's basically the Adobe Premiere Pro warp stabilization, but on steroids, it uses like unique algorithms which works with the video files to basically give you a super smooth gimbal-like video. Other nifty features that I think the Sony A7S III is great for, especially for video people, flip out screen, very nice. It's got other things such as a full-size HDMI port. You've got pretty good SD card options because not only can it take two SDs, but to CF Express as well. So if you are really serious about shooting in 4K, then chuck in the CF Express cards and you're gonna have a pretty decent time, especially with the buffering times. On top of that as well, they fix up the ergonomics. There's a record button at the top, which is more true to videographers. And also the big fat joystick and basically the wheels and the shutter button has all been improved. Now, this camera isn't also just good for videos, but because of its full frame sensor, it's pretty good for photos too. You can shoot up to 10 frames a second and get a pretty decent sized print. Now, although you're not gonna be printing anything as large as a billboard like the A7R, you're still gonna have some great photos to share with your family and friends, or even with your clients. And now we're at the top of the line, the Sony A9 series. Now this line of camera is completely different to the A7 and the A6000 series because it's focused at the professional market, more towards sports photographers, wildlife photographers, as well as wedding and event photographers. Because both of these cameras basically sport super fast shooting speeds of up to 20 frames per second, continuously without blackout, it's absolutely amazing and some other features as well. First of all, it's got a full frame 24 megapixel sensor, making it quite versatile in all lighting conditions. 
and you've also got fast transfer speeds and other ways to tether out your camera as well, such as through a LAN port. Now, the A9 and the A92 basically share the same core elements. However, the A92 sports a refresh from the original A9. This was released to be slated for the Tokyo 2020 Olympics, rest in peace, but it's got some slight design upgrades to it that makes it a lot more comfortable for photographers. Firstly, it's got a deeper grip and it has an improved autofocus algorithm making it a lot snappier than the original A9. But one of the biggest complaints about the A9 compared to other professional cameras in this range, such as the Nikon D6, it has better weatherproofing. So it's got some extra bibs and bobs on the inside of the chassis of the camera to basically keep water out so you can shoot in those not so friendly conditions. Now both of these cameras, although aren't for the consumer, it's probably the only camera right now on the market that high-end professional photographers such as the 1DX users and the D6 users need to go to like a mirrorless form factor this is really the option on the market and it's cool to see sony going out there and trying to shake up even the high-end professional market as well and that basically wraps out our sony range video for 2020. now one of my favorite things about sony as a camera company is they're such amazing tech innovators and even from day one and no matter if you're buying their entry-level a6100 all the way up to their A9 series, you're still gonna get amazing eye autofocus technology, great shooting speeds, amazing noise performance, and one of the best camera sensors out there on the market right now. Now, if you're looking for more information on any of the cameras we've just listed, head to our website or drop into our store, um, see a Sony specialist and they can help you out with any of your questions, but also explore our YouTube channel. We've basically done reviews for almost all of these models so make sure to check them out so you can learn a lot more about these cameras now if you have any video suggestions or any questions about any of the cameras we've listed drop them in the comments below and if you're looking to purchase anything we've got our links in the description below to all these cameras and finally make sure to hit the like button and the subscribe button to keep up to date with all our latest updates on our youtube channel as we upload camera videos weekly I'm part of this bench is definitely more angled. <laughs>